too far back. Okay, book shimmy. <laughs> hey creeps, Cameron here. Welcome back to another episode of Library Macabre. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you all of the books that I got at the after Christmas 33% off sale at Barnes & Noble. They could have come up with a catchier phrase for it, but this is what we have to work with. Last year, they did a 50% off sale at Barnes & Noble after Christmas, and I have been regretting it ever since that I didn't take better advantage of that sale. They had 50% off all of their hardcovers, 50% off all of their board games. I should have bought more board games, oops. So all through 2023, I was like, please, Barnes & Noble, please have another 50% off sale so that way I can buy some hardcovers and actually take advantage of it and undo what wasn't done the year before. Well, here comes Christmas day and there has been no talk, no announcements of a sale. And I'm like, all right, well, fine. Uh, I guess there's no sale, whatever, it's fine. I don't need more shit. <laughs> but then on the day after Christmas, boom, we're having a sale. It's 33% off all of our hardcovers. And at this, I was just like, all right, well, forget it. It's not enough. But if you're part of their rewards program, and that includes their free rewards program, you would get an additional $20 on your rewards card for every $50 spent. So at the end of the day, basically it's 50% off. I think it was just kind of an incentive to try to get more people to join the rewards club. The bad news is they didn't have any board games on sale, maybe a select few, but not enough for me. So I didn't get any board games, but I did get a nice stack of hardcovers. I went the first day and then the next day I was like, actually, I need to go back. So I got some more books. If you follow my channel closely, you're probably like, I'm surprised you bought any new books at all because I usually buy used books. I'll often buy brand new indie books because those never really go on sale. And also as an indie author, I like to support other indie authors. And while we're on the subject, you should actually do this too. You don't have to just buy whatever publishers give to you. You're not a baby. You don't have to be spoon fed. You can broaden your horizons and buy other kinds of books. Don't look at my pores. But obviously these are all like mainstream books, really popular books, which I don't usually go for, but there have been some really good horror releases in the past year where I'm like, okay, I'm actually really interested in these. These are all horror thrillers. So if you don't like that kind of thing, this is Library Macabre. I don't know what you're doing here. First, we have the book that I was most excited for, and this is the one that I really wanted to buy at Barnes & Noble. Like if I didn't walk away with anything else, I would have just been happy to get this. This is The Night House by Joe Nesbo. Joe Nesbo is the best-selling author of what is it called? The Harry Hole series? <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's really what it is. Look, Harry Hole. I'm not gonna be able to read those books and take them seriously, but he just released a brand new horror book and I was like, okay, this is more my speed. <laughs> <laughs> so this is The Night House, and this sounds really cool. This is basically, and I mean, you can tell from the cover, it's got a whole vintage theme going on. This is about a mysterious phone booth in the woods that's like kidnapping kids, like sucking them up. And I imagine the phone booth has something to do with this house, The Night House. So our main character is trying to find the kids that are being kidnapped from his school and nobody believes him about the phone booth. This just sounds great. The cover's great. I'm very excited to read this. This is like one of the main books I'm excited to read this year. Next up is one that I have been eyeing all year long and I finally got my hands on it. This has been highly recommended by a lot of friends of mine who I know and trust. This is Dead Eleven by Jimmy Giuliano. This book has a lot to do with the year 1994, which is appropriate for me because my book that came out last year kind of takes place in 1994. Well, it starts out at the end of 1993. The series will end in 1994. But anyway, this book follows an island, kind of a, a cult of sorts, that is obsessed with the year 1994. And they kind of live their life on this island as if it's 1994. So this woman comes to the island. I believe she's trying to figure out who murdered her son. Yeah, the island is Clifford Island and Willow comes to the island to learn the truth about her son's death. On the edge here, it says that it's fiction, thrillers, supernatural. So there's obviously some kind of supernatural angle to this. I don't know why they don't just call it horror. Everyone's afraid of that word, especially publishers. The Christmas Guest. This is one that I had to go back for because uh, my first trip to Barnes & Noble, I 
ended up turning it down. And then I was like, actually, I really want it. This is a Christmassy thriller. It's a novella, so it was very short. From New York Times bestselling author Peter Swanson comes a spectacularly spine-chilling story of an American student spending the holidays in a British manor house where she discovers dangerous secrets and a grim history hidden behind a seemingly charming Christmas celebration. Kind of wish I'd bought this before Christmas so that way I could have read it for Christmas, but I bought it a couple days later. So uh, I'm just gonna save it for Christmas 2024. Next up, we've got Mr. Magic. Again, we've got the whole vintage thing going on here. There's an old TV on the cover. Former child stars reunite to uncover the tragedy that ended their show and discover the secret of its enigmatic host in this dark supernatural thriller. Again, supernatural thriller. They don't want to use the word horror. Heaven forbid. It's a nasty word. This sounds a lot to me like the show Channel Zero having to do with, you know, cursed children's TV shows and how children's TV shows seem so innocent as a kid when you're watching them and then you see them as an adult and it's like, whoa, this is way creepier than I remember it being. I'm very eager to dive into this. I've heard great things from all of my friends. A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. If you know me, you know that I love a good classic haunted house story. Of course, it's not written by Shirley Jackson, but I hear that this is a good follow-up to The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. It says here, it's the first novel authorized to return to the world of Shirley Jackson's Haunting of Hill House. So this is an authorized sequel. And that's all I need to know. <laughs> Haunting on the Hill. Next up, we've got another house related book, Fever House by Keith Rosin. I've heard good things about this, but I have to say, I saw it on the shelf and I was like, that cover looks too cool. I need to have it. <laughs> Gotta get it while it's on sale. I am a consumer, sue me. It says, Pulp Fiction meets a punk rock Da Vinci Code as secret agents, hoodlums, and the son of a dead rock star get drawn into the orbit of a severed hand with dark powers and this awesomely blood-soaked, thrillingly entertaining horror noir mashup. Yeah, I'm in. The only thing about this one is that it is quite beefy. It's a pretty big book. So the other ones are a little more manageable. I think this one's the biggest one, but still I am gonna be reading it this year. This is one of the books I'm most excited to read in 2024. And last but not least, we have another one that has come highly recommended by all of my friends, Kelsey from Slime and Slashers in particular. I bought this because of you, Kelsey. This is Edenville by Sam Ribelline. So while this is marketed as a horror book, I've heard that it's actually more just kind of weird fiction, that there are horror elements to this and it is technically a horror novel, but it's nothing really horrific as it is just weird and bizarre. This book follows a young man who has just released his debut novel to really poor sales, but then the Edenville College invites him to be like this writer in residence. So he goes to live in this town and boy, if it's not a weird place. Honestly, I'm just a sucker for books that are about writers. I always kind of connect with those. So I'm very eager to read it just for that reason alone. Oh, so here we go. There's my little stack of Barnes and Noble hardcovers from the sale. I have to say, as somebody who doesn't actually buy books from Barnes and Noble very often, just because they're so expensive, it was just, I don't know, like a nice luxurious treat to go and get my coffee and to walk around the store and choose my books. Now that's not the only sale I hit up after Christmas because Half Price Books also had a sale. It was 20% off store-wide. Got a nice little stack going here just to preview. No worries, I will be back to show you all of the books I bought during the Half Price Books 20% off sale. So I'll see you soon in that video. <laughs> Later creeps.